Welcome to the Dirty Lazy Keto Podcast by Stephanie Laska. I lost 140 pounds, and I cannot wait to share all of my keto, low-carb secrets with you during Season 5. Get ready for a fast ride, because the Dirty Lazy Keto Podcast by Stephanie Laska is going to get you inspired and help you to be successful. Let's get started. Today, my friends, we are going to do some examples, some examples of what I eat on the keto diet. So some examples. I'm going to be showing you some beautiful examples um, of a typical day and what that looks like on Dirty Lazy Keto. So if this sounds interesting to you and you're really excited to see what it is I'm eating, please give this video a thumbs up. That way I know you're interested. And these are the foods, you guys, the ones that I'm going to share with you today, the snacks and the meals. These are the actual foods that helped me to lose 140 pounds and to keep that weight off now for a decade. That is 10 years, people. So I started eating these foods when I was losing weight, and I've kept eating these foods now that I've lost the weight. It's not like I go back to eating a bunch of junk. I'm still eating these delicious, amazing foods. So I have prepared a show and tell for you guys. Um, and specifically, I got this big giant number five here because I broke up today's show and tell examples into five meals slash snacks slash desserts. Um, and this is just a snapshot. This is what I ate yesterday. So I'm going to cover some breakfast, lunch, some snacks, uh, dinner, and dessert. I'll save the best for last. So make sure you stay tuned for the dessert because it is something I am totally obsessed with obsessed people. It's so good. So I saved the best for last. So stay tuned for all five. And let's talk about da -da -da -da, examples of what I eat on keto. Because that's why you're here, right? You're tuned in, you're ready to go. You want to write these down or take notes or get even inspired. So let's start with number one, breakfast. I'll go fast because breakfast can be pretty simple. Um, here is typically what I'm having these days on the keto diet. Now, I talk a lot about my yogurt. I love the Faye, hopefully I'm saying it right, Faye yogurt. This one is the 5% milk fat. Um, but honestly, you could do any kind of low carb yogurt. Look for something with high protein as well. Too Good is another popular one in our group. But you can, you know, wherever you're at. I've even bought some Icelandic yogurt that is super tasty and yummy. Now, what I like to do in my yogurt to make it more exciting than just plain, because I don't have any, you know, flavors or sugaring, I'm just getting the plain stuff, is I like to add some sugar-free sweetener, some uh, pure vanilla extract, and I like to top my yogurt with a little bit of berries. Yummy. Low-carb berries. Here are, I can put them in my little cup here so they are hiding from myself and wouldn't fall over. But here is a nice little cup of low-carb blueberries, and I like that it's in the small thimble, that way I don't go crazy, because they can be higher in carbs if you're eating a whole pint of them or a whole cup, but I'm just having a couple of tablespoons, and this is an, a really good trick for enjoying fruit on a keto diet, is to use it as a topping, not necessarily as the entire snack, and that way you get the flavor, you get the enjoyment, but not as many carbs as if you just shoveled them in your mouth 100 miles an hour, which I would love to do. Um, you could also substitute, instead of berries, another low-carb fruit. What would you put? Tell me in the comments. Sometimes I use low-carb nuts and top that and make it kind of a sundae, like, for example, macadamia nuts. That is another one of my favorites. Um, if you like morning routines like this and you want to kind of find out more about, like, cereal alternatives or eggs or, you know, different recipes or just what I'm doing in the morning to get ready, I will link up a video right after this that is called Get Ready With Me. Get Ready With Me. Isn't that fun? Get Ready With Me. And I'll share all my morning routines with you during that video. So that's number one, breakfast. Done. Lots of coffee. I'm drinking lots of water already. And then I'm ready to go. Let's move. So that was all number one. I'm going to move on to number two because I told you I'm going to talk fast today. This is all examples of what I eat on the keto diet to have lost 140 pounds. And my lunch, you guys, can be something like grab on the go. You know, people are working, you're traveling, you're going places, you're doing errands. Maybe you don't want to have to cook a big thing at lunch. 
I eat a lot of leftovers sometimes. I'm not afraid of that. But if I don't feel like making a big fuss, a lot of times my lunch these days consists of deli meat. Purchased from my local Walmart. Um, here's some turkey meat here in a Ziploc. <laughs> Nothing fancy, right? This is like hardcore, easy peasy. And I'm going to enjoy some low carb cheese with that. And that would be full fat provolone. Here is my example. Love cheddar, love provolone, love cheese. And I'm going to make myself like a little sandwich using some lettuce wraps. I'll add some mayonnaise, some avocado maybe. I'm going to put a bunch of my turkey, my cheese. I'll add a few slices of purple onion or red onion. It's the lowest carb onion. Maybe, like I said, guacamole or avocado slices to get a little bit more fat in that and make it tasty. Now, you can just buy regular romaine lettuce leaves, like I showed there, and wash them yourself. But I did find this handy-dandy little thing at Walmart, this, what is it, Man's Better Crunch. And all it is is pre-washed lettuce leaves because that is how lazy I am on Dirty Lazy Keto. That's hardcore lazy, where I can't even wash my lettuce sometimes. I just want to slap together a sandwich. I use a bunch of these lettuce leaves. Woo! They're spilling everywhere. And I just make myself a little roll-up. It doesn't have to be pretty. It can spill all over the place. But it gets the job done. And if I'm still hungry, I eat a second one. I can eat a third one. I'm not shy about having this because it's super low in carb and super healthy for me. And it fills me up. It's delicious. Some of you might be saying, well, Stephanie, I don't know. I mean, maybe you should use some bread or something when you're making that. No, you don't necessarily have to. Um, if you like keto type low carb bread and it doesn't bother your weight loss, you know, more power to you. Um, I've gotten out of the habit of it because I find that it can be pricey, hard to find. A lot of times I feel like it tastes. Uh. And I just enjoy getting a little bit more vegetables when I'm using lettuce wraps. I just find it a little easier. But you do you, okay? Gold star to you if you find a new routine that works for you. I'm just sharing today what, um, you know, I actually ate yesterday. I'm trying not to be like editing myself. I want it to be honest and real. This is what I had yesterday for, eat, for eating. Let's go on to number three, uh, snacks. So I tend to eat a lot like throughout the day. I don't necessarily do any big giant um, intermittent fasting windows and I stop eating after dinner. Um, I do enjoy a lot of snacks though. Sometimes I eat when I'm not even hungry, just because I'm bored. And I think that's okay. What I have found on Dirty Lazy Keto, there's some foods that I can eat, <clears throat> but maybe I'm bored or stressed and I still want something to eat. I think that's okay. Some people might disagree and go, oh, oh my goodness, like what is she doing? But you know what, this works for me. Again, this has helped me lose 140 pounds and keep that weight off. One of my favorite snacks to have, I'm gonna give you three snacks because I want to cover salty, savory, and sweet. I'm going to give you three different examples of snacks that I often have. Um, an artichoke that I've steamed up. I'll dip the leaves. Another snack, because remember I told you I'd give you three. And I'm not afraid to eat all of these in one day. It's not like I pick and choose. Um, I have talked about this in a lot of my videos. Tell me if you have ever tried my recommendation for cut up cucumbers topped with vinegar, just plain old white distilled vinegar household vinegar, and then feta cheese, full fat feta cheese. I'm holding it up here so you can see. And then sprinkle like some sugar-free sweetener on top, like for example, Splenda or whatever it is that you like to use. I know that sounds crazy, but for me, it fills me up. It's delicious. I'm obsessed. I can't stop eating this. And it reminds me of a powdered donut. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Now, some of you in the comments might start poking at me and making fun because I just said, I'm craving uh, Hush Puppies from Red Lobster and powdered donuts and somehow an artichoke and a cucumber hits the spot for me. But you got to do what you got to do, right? I'm happy and I'm satisfied. So good. I love English cucumbers or pickling cucumbers. They're sturdier than the other kind and they just taste good. They make me so happy. I think being happy and being satisfied on the keto diet are very important. So think about that when you're considering what meals or snacks to have. If you feel tortured or you don't like what you're eating um, or it doesn't taste good to you or you're forcing yourself, 
then you should find a new meal or a new snack, right? Because if you're feeling punished and angry and, and frustrated all the time about what you're eating, it'll be just like some old diet of the past where you quit after a while because you're upset. You don't want to do that. So find foods, find meals, find snacks like I'm talking about here that meet your cravings and make you feel happy. So that way you can stick with this lifestyle forever. One more uh, snack is some nuts. I love salty peanuts lately. I talked about macadamia nuts on my Faye yogurt. If I have blueberries in the morning and then I have a little room for nuts later, then I'll go for some peanuts. I don't tend to do uh, nuts in the morning, nuts in the afternoon, nuts in the evening, nuts here, nuts there, because guess what happens? Y'all can guess that one, I bet. Eating too many nuts is an easy way to start gaining weight. I do recommend just sticking with like one serving a day until you get the hang of it and you get a feel for how you're doing and, you know, some steady weight loss. You can always introduce more later, but in the beginning especially, think about how you can just have like one serving a day. You'll still get those health benefits and the taste. Oh, I said I was going to give you salty, sweet, savory. I do want to tell you another delicious snack that we do have around the house. Sometimes we have them left. Other times my husband eats them all. We have to fight for him. <laughs> but this is one of my favorites here. I'm holding up a fresh jalapeno. But I love, 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 and so does my husband, poppers, jalapeno poppers. Do you guys, anyone like the hot, spicy foods? I'll show you a picture here. Look at that beautiful tray of jalapeno poppers. I mean, it gets you in all the levels, right? It's salty, it's crunchy, it's, um, you know, it's got the fat in there, it's got the heat, it's got so much going on. I have recipes for jalapeno poppers in probably every cookbook, right? There's four of them, even in the Get Started book. But this particular recipe is one that we had yesterday around the house, so I share with you. It is on page 102 of the Dirty Lazy Keto Five Ingredient Cookbook. So if you want to make these, this is what my husband and I were fighting over. <laughs> They're so good. Page 102, um, jalapeno popper recipe of the Dirty Lazy Keto Five Ingredient Cookbook. That's the fourth of the, the cookbook series. Fun, right? Do you guys like jalapeno peppers? You like heat? Tell me. Tell me in the comments. Tell me how you make yours. I'd love to hear your um, favorite snack or your favorite way to enjoy um, spicy food. And while you comment away, I'm going to spin the wheel because I want to give away a prize today. Lifting up the giant wheel. People are always like, how do I win this later? What if I'm watching, you know, not when you're, what if I'm not watching you, Stephanie, when you are live, but what if I'm watching this later? And that's okay too. I often do prizes on a regular basis because I think it's fun to learn. And I will do giveaways on my YouTube channel. I'll randomly pick someone from the comments. I also pick people from the Facebook premium support group, right? The small group for women only. And that's the subscription Facebook group. Oh, well, that was exciting. Let's try that one again. That was a big spin. <laughs> hey, things go wrong when you're on live TV, right? So here's the prize today I'm going to give away to somebody. Oh, how exciting. It is a tomato timer. How cute. I don't think I've given away one of those in a long time. Let me show you what that looks like. This was a giveaway prize a long time ago when we were doing a cookbook launch. I love to get, oh, I love to get prizes to give to everybody for being engaged and participating. And sometimes when we pre-order books, I'll have a pre-order bonus gift. So you always want to be tuning in and paying attention. Let's see if I can find that tomato. Is it in here? The tomato timer. Oh, I can see it behind me on the bookshelf. So let me run. Oh, here it goes. <laughs> I have so many prizes, look, that we give away every week. My husband and I. Here is the tomato timer. Isn't that adorable? It's really a keepsake item. It's not probably the most reliable, but it's absolutely cute. And you can spin it. It says a dirty, lazy keto, no time to cook cookbook on it. There you go. And it does work. It's more cute than functional, I think, though. It's adorable. So I'm going to give one of these away in the comments. And if you would like to win one, comment away. If you don't want to wait in case I don't pick you, or you want to win one of these other amazing prizes, like 
a sign by the author cookbook or a dry erase calendar. Maybe you want a Dirty Lazy Keto cutting board or I have the lunch pail in my hand. All these fun prizes from previous spins are all available at cost. So not expensive, very affordable. On my Etsy shop and it's etsy.com forward slash shop the dirty lazy keto shop so hopefully you can see that i'll read it again etsy.com forward slash shop the dirty lazy keto shop and that is where you can find all of these prizes and more and we have i think already sold out on some items so go quickly all sorts of fun things even the kitchen magnet the dirty lazy keto food pyramid magnet all sorts of goodies there so I'll put that away. So hopefully that gets you motivated. You're like, oh, I like prizes. I like prizes too. When I taught uh, second grade, when I taught kindergarten, even when I taught high school, the kids would get more involved and more excited to win a prize, even if it's something little. Because I like to win stuff too. It's fun, right? Kind of keeps us more engaged. Let's go on to number four. Number four, you guys. Here is an example of what I eat on a typical day when it comes to Dinner. Can I have a gold star for dinner? Last night, I did not feel like cooking. So I took myself out to eat. I thought this would be helpful for you guys to see that you don't have to always be at home, you know, with your cookbook, making meals and doing everything from scratch, or even some of the quick Dirty Lazy Keto recipes. You don't always have to cook or prepare the meals yourself. So last night, we went to Chipotle. Do you guys like Chipotle or do you like Mexican foods? I do. My family does. Obviously, you could tell because I was showing my jalapeno obsession. Um, but we went over to Chipotle and I brought home <clears throat> a couple of the items from our adventure to Chipotle to talk about. So here's what I ordered. I ordered myself a chicken bowl. So it wasn't a salad. I ordered a chicken bowl. Now, Something you should know about Chipotle. I'll tell you what not to get if you're on the keto diet. You do not want to order rice. You do not want to order beans of any kind. You do not want to order corn or tortillas or chips. Can I have a sad button? <laughs> I don't miss these items, but the chips, okay, yeah, sometimes we do. But we can make chips, right, with our own low-carb tortillas. That's easy to do in the air fryer. But go ahead and skip those items when you are out at Mexican. The ones I listed here, beans, rice, tortilla, corn, chips. Go ahead and skip those items. And instead, here are the items that I recommend you pile on and enjoy. Now, when I was at Chipotle yesterday for my bowl, I ordered chicken, like I said. Here's my chicken hat. But you could have also, or I could have also ordered... Isn't that cute? It's a little cow. <laughs> I need a pig one, too. But you could have easily ordered a steak or carnitas on your uh, Chipotle bowl. Here's another recommendation I have for you when you're at Chipotle. Did you know that when the server is ladling food in your, your bowl or serving you, that you can tell them to keep going? <laughs> Fun little fact, because I'm extra uh, thrifty. But you can actually, while they're serving you and the spoon is in their hand, you can tell them, keep going, I want more, I want more. And I like to do that in particular when it comes to their fajita vegetables. Have you ever tried their fajita vegetables at Chipotle? They're really good. And they're low carb. You know, it's an assortment of bell peppers and onion. And super yummy, super tasty. Have them pile it on. It's a great sense or a great way to add more fiber and flavor to your food. And here's the thing, you guys. You may not like these vegetables, like love them necessarily. You can tolerate them. But if you start putting other ingredients on, like cheese, <laughs> uh, guacamole, pico de gallo, you know, lettuce, salsa. You start putting all these other items on to your chipotle bowl, and suddenly these vegetables that, you know, may not be your absolute favorite, suddenly they're pretty good, and they're tolerable, and you're eating them, and then you're more full. That way later you're not munching or looking for more snacks. You're more full, you're more satisfied. It's added more fiber and nutrition to your diet. So that's a little trick for you. I do have a whole video on tricks for eating more vegetables on the keto diet. I can link that up below if you'd like. It's called tricks for eating more vegetables. Oh, 
going to set this down. I'll be eating those uh, leftover vegetables later, so I don't want them tipping. <laughs> so if you need some more help, though, you know, with this item, dinner in particular, or going out to eat, and you're like, well, what do, how many carbs are in those things? You know, what else can I order? I'm going to give you a another tip. That way you're not standing in line at Chipotle or having your waiter or waitress come by at a restaurant, and you're just like, oh, I have no idea what to order, and then you stress out and go back to old habits. So here's a little tip for you. On your phone... On your phone, download the ebook version of these two books. Ebook. That way you can access it from your phone. Isn't that a great idea? These are the two books I recommend um, The Dirty Lazy Keto Fast Food Guide. The Dirty Lazy Keto Fast Food Guide, 10 Carbs or Less. It is free, free, free with Kindle Unlimited on Amazon. So get your copy today. It'll tell you what I recommend to order that's low carb and the amount of net carbs in that item. Super duper helpful. Um, another very helpful restaurant guide for eating out is the Keto Diet Restaurant Guide. This covers over 60 restaurants nationwide, and it recommends what to eat. So I talked about Red Lobster earlier. Obviously, we don't want to walk in there and start getting those hush puppies. Right, that would be bad. <laughs> Instead, we want to make sure we're ordering things that are low-carb and healthy for us. And in this guide, you'll find... Not only does it include the amount of net carbs per item, but you can look up one of your favorite restaurants. Here's Red Robin. And you can also find the amount of fat, the amount of net carbs, the amount of protein. I mean, how helpful is that? You can even get uh, calories here, if I'm not mistaken. My husband and I put this together, and it is in so, such detail. Yep, calories too. Calories, protein, and a description of what to order broken up by breakfast, lunch, dinner, drinks, and, and so on. It's a real big guide, so... Having it on your phone is super helpful. So that, that way you're not walking into, you know, um, this Mexican restaurant and you're like, well, what should I order? You know, I'm at Chili's. Or, and you have the Hong Kong phone book with you. That way it's on your phone. It's kind of a neat little trick. <sighs> you like those ideas? That was number four about uh, my keto dinner. Do you guys shop, uh, go to Chipotle for Mexican food? I do. I love Mexican food. We eat quite a bit of it while either I'm cooking or making it at home. Uh, let's move on to number five, because I told you that was going to be my favorite. Number five is dessert. We need a... Oh. <laughs> I was trying to do my little bell for us. This one's easy. That was easy. Okay. This one's super easy and delicious and fun to make. And I, as I mentioned to you, I've been a little bit obsessed with this lately. A little bit obsessed. So watch out. Here is what you do. This is called a simple, simple, simple. We should come up with a fun name for it. But basically, you are going to enjoy, if you make what I'm recommending to you, um, it is like a strawberry smoothie, a strawberry milkshake. It's very similar to the recipe on page 188 of the No Time to Cook cookbook. So page 188. It's very similar to this one. I'm going to give you a slightly different recipe in case you have this book. That way it'll be, um, you know, like a bonus recipe. But I've been really obsessed with this lately. And here's what I do to make this delicious smoothie, the strawberry smoothie for dessert. So I have my blender. All right. have my blender. And I add to it a little bit of heavy cream, just a splash, not too much. You don't need to go to town. You don't need a cup. Just splash it in. I add some frozen strawberries. Um, frozen strawberries are, what, 8 to 10 net carbs per cup when they're whole. So I don't use a whole cup. I just throw a couple in for more flavor and appearance. Just a, two or three. Here are some frozen strawberries from Costco I love to get. You can buy them anywhere or fresh, whatever. It's up to you. I like to add some ice. I like to add some non-dairy, unsweetened almond milk. If you don't like this, use a different kind of unsweetened, low-carb milk alternative. Whatever you like is fine. This just happens to be what I've been buying because it is so cheap at Walmart. I love it. It's like two bucks. I do a little teensy tiny splash of this strawberry extract. That is my secret weapon by McCormick. You don't have to use this. It tastes just as good without it. 
but I like to add it just for a little extra flavor. I do some Splenda or sugar-free sweetener, whatever I have on, on hand, I add that here. And I also add some vanilla Quest protein powder. If you don't have this one, you have a different brand, you have a different style, any kind of low carb protein powder is gonna do just fine. And play around with it. I have so much fun experimenting with different flavors. I even have put in like a flavor packets, like for water, like strawberry or any other fruit flavor. And it makes it really tasty and delicious. And I just blend it all up. That's it. Blend it to your liking. It's not like there's an exact amount of this, an exact amount of that. It's more just kind of add this, add that, keep tasting it. And I'm certain it's foolproof. If you make this dessert, you'll be like, oh, Stephanie, I see why you're obsessed. I can't stop. <laughs> so that is my, that is my little uh, dessert. That's my little trick. I mean, granted, all of these recipes you can find um, similar ones to what I made today or other ideas for you. There's more and more and more in all the Dirty Lazy Keto cookbooks. I recommended that to you. They're really easy and fun to make. Normal food, normal ingredients. Here I was on the Today Show. I made egg bites with Al, Ro Al Roker. Can you see that? Do you guys like egg bites on keto? That's a really good idea too. I'll have to make that for a future episode for you guys. But simple, easy, fun, tasty. Great way to use up leftover meats or vegetables from the week. I mean, really these foods are tasty. They're delicious. They are fun to eat. They make you feel satisfied and happy. And as you can see from these examples of what I eat on the keto diet, these foods are from normal grocery stores. I specifically did not include like keto chips, keto cereal, keto, you know, frozen waffles, keto, you know, frozen chicken nuggets, all those things that you can buy at some grocery stores. I deliberately did not include them today because I want you to see that how normal and easy and fun it is to eat regular food from regular places in your neighborhood and then even include eating out. So that way you can feel like this is so doable. I mean, there's nothing fancy or expensive required. So if you want specific advice, if you're like, well, Stephanie, I have, I have questions. Like how many net carbs a, a day do I eat? And how do I do this? And how do I do that? And you mentioned something about, you know, keto bread. Can you talk more about that in general? And, and what if I'm having problems? Let me hold up a piece of bread here. Am I allowed to have tomatoes? How many net carbs are in all these items? If you have very specific questions, you know, this video wasn't meant to tell you every single thing you would need to know about the keto diet. This video is more of just a general inspire you. You can see how easy it is. You can see the, the meals and snacks are just normal everyday foods. That is the point of today's short little time together. But if you want more specific advice, you want to know how to do the keto diet. How do you do dirty, lazy keto? Does it work? How do you make it work for you? I do recommend two books. I recommend that you read Dirty Lazy Keto, Revised and Expanded. Have you read this one? The Revised and Expanded version is the one you want to start with. Nothing else but this one. And for specific advice on how to get going that first seven days, I recommend the newest book, which is Extra Easy Keto. This is where you're gonna find the basics of ketosis, how to make a meal plan, foodless, like we didn't cover drinks today. There's a whole section on drinks. There's like a 16 page grocery list. You're gonna have tips for um, counting net carbs, um, how to manage all those cravings for dirty keto foods and it, um, desserts and snacks without going off track. I know, right? I get all excited. I mean, all of the information you're gonna need is gonna be in these two books. It'll be like your keto Bibles. I mean, really, you can't just have one or the other. You're gonna need them both, that's what I think. And if you've read one of them, put it in the comments below and tell others that way they know the value of these stories. I mean, you could probably get it at your local library. You could also get it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, target.com. These books are available worldwide. I do think that in paperback, ebook, audio bag, audio format, whatever works for you is going to be a good fit. Don't feel like you have to have this. You have to have that. Just get a copy, get started. However, you're going to want to listen to it or read it through. You are going to make notes and come back to it again and again and again. Uh, some people have asked me, how do I get an author signed copy? You might see some of the stickers I'm showing say author signed. And it might have like a note of encouragement. You've heard people in the group post about this. Like, oh, Stephanie sent me a book and it had a note and it had author's signature inside. 
if you want one of the books, there's a limited amount, and I have them on the Etsy shop. I've already sold out of two of them, um, but of the eight books, there are some still available if you want me to write a personalized note to you or you want me to gift it to you know, one of your friends or family. And you would just order that at Etsy.com. It's, again, it's the same price as any other bookstore. And then it's Etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash the dirty, lazy, keto shop. And that's where you can find some of those prizes, and then the signed signed books, cookbooks. I think we have two left, but give it a give it a look over. It's a lot of fun, right? <sighs> I feel like I have to take a breath after that. That was exciting. So no, you guys, I'm here to support you. I'm here to help you. Don't forget about that video we're going to link up right after this, which is all about my keto morning routines to take a look at what I'm doing in the morning to get ready for a successful day. I'll share with you exactly what it is I do. So you can link up and watch that next. And please give yourself a round of applause, pat yourself on the back. And thank you so much for watching, listening to this episode about examples of what I eat on keto. We did good, right? Do you have a favorite one or something you're going to try? Or do you want to share what you're going to eat? Please tell us in the comments. Can't wait to see you guys again every week on our little show, our little program here, our little group. It's fun, right? Give yourself a round of applause. You did so good. Can we dance a little? You did good. You did good. I'm so proud of you. Um, and also, you guys, you can always go to DirtyLazyKeto.com and sign in for that free newsletter. I will send you um, more reminders about new videos and podcasts and, you know, recipes and fun tips just right to your inbox and it's totally free. So I will see you next week. Give yourself a round of applause. Yay! Thanks for joining me on the adventure today with the Dirty Lazy Keto Podcast. If you have questions about what we talked about, head over to my website, dirtylazyketo.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for my free newsletter.